So this is how your workday system looks like. And there will be instruction that will be shared with you how to log in and everything. But uh, in today's session, we'll just walk over a few navigation concepts, which are pretty easy, pretty, pretty, I think pretty light to understand as well. All right, so this is your home page of your workday screen. You have multiple options on the home page header, which is the top bar here. All right. So let's get started from the top left. This is your menu option. This gives you, this is basically called as global navigation. This gives you a list of all the available worklets, reports, dashboards that are visible to you based on the security that you have. Okay, I've not talked about security. Okay, so based on the security that you have, uh, you will see these worklets and there are some worklets which are specifically for employee. There's something called as, if you're making notes, just write down these two abbreviations. One is ESS. It's called employee self-service. Rohan, you mentioned the term worklet, uh, worklets or something. What is that? Uh, yes, like worklets, dashboards, applications. These are interchangeably used. And the second one is MSS, manager self-service. You can change the order of these. You can add up to 20 applications if you want to change the order. You can you can sort them also. You can add applications. You can you want to unload this, you can add that. You'll get added to the menu. As simple as that. Like click on the button. Here you go. You have your both this added. If you want to shuffle the order that you want both this to be here, you can also do that. Pretty simple, pretty straightforward. And then you have shortcuts, right? And this, anything that you use on a day-to-day -day basis, you can create a shortcut for that, right? You can add the, you can add up to a maximum of 10 shortcuts. Let's say I have a new hire report, which I need to use daily. So let's say this is that report. I just add it into my shortcut menu. And here it is. Again, using the edit button, you can shuffle the order of your listing of shortcuts. And it gets saved. I'll suggest that you do not, not just for this, but overall within the setup, once you receive the tenant access, please do not remove anything. Do not delete anything unless, until and unless you have created that yourself. This is a shared environment. A lot of consultants, a lot of candidates like you use this tenant on a day-to-day -day basis for practice. So I'll recommend, please do not mess with anybody else's data. It's highly, highly disrespectful and it's not a very well appreciated thing within the Workday ecosystem. Even though you're learning right now, you're already part of the Workday ecosystem. So whatever you create, you don't create it as your own account. You create it through the account of this person. And this is not a real employee. This is a dummy employee. But this has all the security that is needed. So every time you log into the tenant, if you're not logged in as this person, there's a way that you need to log in as this person and do everything. So technically, this is that person who's doing everything. It's not you who are doing everything. In real world, you will have your own account, obviously. But this is a test setup. We cannot create multiple accounts. We only get one test setup. And we can only use the limited number of users that we have. And uh, next to the menu button is your home button. This is like in the earlier iPhone series, we used to have a button in the center, which you click. Anything you're doing, it brings you back to your home page. This is that home page. You're doing any particular process. If it's in the middle of it, you click this. If there's an option to cancel it, you will get a pop-up that to discard it or save the changes. Else, it will just open up. Else, it will just navigate to this home page. Okay, and on the home page, you can see there are certain booklets. Right hand side, you can see some important dates. This is highly configurable. You can add more things. As you can see, there are some top apps here, timely suggestions, some 
announcements that you can add here on the right hand side, which is like fire drill is a good example. Then benefit elections, enrollment time is a good example. Or if your company has stocks listed on the stock exchange and the window is open, you can check that as well. So very good information that you can do. So this will completely be customized based on your company's need, what information that you need. But awaiting your action will always be there because this refers to your inbox item here on the top right next to the profile picture. Earlier, the name of this was called as Inbox, but there was a very recent release update from Workday and they've changed the name to My Tasks. Okay, so this gives you a list of that. And now coming to the header again, on the right most side, you have the profile picture. This is like your account button. You click on it, you can open up the profile homepage and multiple options here. Right, you click on the profile, it brings you to your profile page. Where again, you have multiple options. You see information, like personal information, your compensation information, time off information. Based on if your company is using work day career planning, you will see this. If they are using benefits, you will see this. If they are using payroll, you will see this. If they are using the travel module, you will see this. The modules that are enabled in the system, only those will be visible to employees. So basically, this is like your account in any other application that you have. The next option to the left, like I said, it has been revamped. It has been renamed as My Tasks, which is nothing but the actions that you have to take within the system. All right, so this is how your inbox look. Most of the time you will see these reassigned steps, which comes when there are no users assigned to a particular step. It's very common in the test environment. In the real world, you should limit these kind of steps at the minimum, because that means your security is not set up rightly. But that's a different topic. In the real world, you should uh, limit these kind of things happening like reassigning step. Reassigning step happens is like, for example, uh, if you're a manager using that same example, if you're a manager and one of your direct reports applied for a time off and you left the company. Now that open business process item, which is approval for that time off is still pending and the manager is not there. So that step will go unassigned. You say it says business process unassigned. Okay. We have to minimize these incidences, these number of steps. That means your security is not set up right. Now, the next thing on the header is your notifications. The primary difference between your My Task and your notifications is the information. Notifications are primarily for your information purpose. And most of these are designed on the business process. So any action item that you are liable to take in a business process comes in your My Task. And any notification that we have set up for that comes on your notifications. And these are very simple, like, dear Logan, thank you so much for applying. This is a custom one, like we configured it based on this action. So there's no action that you have to take. It is just for information, like we schedule reports, right? You're a recruiting administrator, you need a report uh, every Monday for any future hires. We create it for you and you will see something like this, that document available. And we can customize that, right? There are custom notifications, there are system notifications that we'll touch upon once we'll start with the business process topic because we'll create notifications. Anyway, coming back to our homepage, the next button that you see next to this is called Workday Assistant. This is like a chatbot. You type in watch my time off, it will give you those answers. And this works completely on artificial intelligence and machine learning. It enhances its memory based on what kind of questions you ask. Right now, it might not work because it needs to be set up correctly, which is a big setup in itself. I, if your company is not using this, area of workday, then you might not see it in your environment. But 
this is a test setup and someone might have enabled it. That's why they are seeing it and it might not be visible every single day. Then last but not the least, the search bar, which is the most powerful thing within the system. Anything you have to do, any action you have to do, anything you have to create, it starts from here. You want to create anything, just type in the keyword create and type in what you want to create. You want to create a compensation grade, type that next to the create. You want to create a job profile, type that next to this. 90% or in fact, more than 90% of the items that we create in the system, you can just type in create as a prefix and type in what you want to create. There will be some or the other type of tasks that are available in the system. But this search bar is not just for that. You can search anything within the system. You can search for people in the system. You can search for reports. So anywhere you have to go for in the system, you start with the search bar. And over the period of time, once we start practicing more into the system, your experience in using the search bar will become much better. So we'll obviously use that uh, every single day to do every single thing, right? Another piece of navigation is something called as related actions button, right? Which you see this as three dot. Wherever you see this as three dots, like for example, I open this person's profile, Manager, three dots. Location, three dots. What else I can have three dots on? Performance. Transactions, three dots. So anywhere you have these three dots, we sometimes call it the Lego or the brick or the Twinkie. But the technical name of this three dots is called Related Actions. And it's also, this button is also the same. Now, by the name itself, if you try to break down it, a related action, it means that if you're getting this button, that means it's some type of object in the system. We don't have to confuse ourselves what kind of object we're talking about. Just understand anything which you see highlighted in blue and you have a related action, this means it's an object. And if you have a related action, that means you can perform some action on that object. Like this is complete manager plan, you have a report for it. These are the actions that you can take. I think the better option would be to go like on a worker history or even job details. You know, this employee is a member of this organization. If I click here, these are the actions I can take. A big list of actions I can take. And all these are coming because my security is of Logan McKee. That's why she has a super, super user access. So you can see all those things. So based on what object, this is a position, this is how it is. If it's not a hyperlink, that means uh, your security is not the most superior one. It is what it should be. And not just that, you can also click these and this will open up what that particular, like I just clicked on San Francisco, it's a location, it has some details to it, so on and so forth. So in real world, you will have on the related actions button in majority of the things that you see because you will be about the administrator going forward, but your access might still be restricted based on certain administrators on. So we look into that as and when we reach to that stage. So this is the complete setup of your homepage, your basic navigation. And once we start with topics, we'll obviously run through different tasks. Like if you have to create an organization, we open that, we'll understand what are the different items we have to create. And we'll learn more now. So navigation is like a everyday learning thing, right? You navigate to new pages, you navigate to new worklets, new dashboards, every single day as part of the topic that we start with. Header is the same for all. But the one that you see, like what your actions are, your important dates, all that can differ based on company to company. Because these all are configurable. You can customize them based on your requirement. Every single topic that we start with, we run some task 
we go through different pages of the workday and that is a new navigation for each of us. But navigation is one thing, see, uh, once you get access to the tenant, you click on these things once, you will remember them. It is not a hard nut to crack. Yeah, But there are some topics like security, business process, compensation, where in the initial phase, it gets slightly confusing. Am I going in the right navigation? Is this where I click? And that is part of the process. There will be instances where you will see where you will get lost that, okay, now where, what next? Where do I click? Okay, so I'll also give you some directions on that as well. So in one of the sessions next week, that will be an extra session. An extra session mean that is not listed or we don't have any presentations of that topic. That is very, very important for any Workday consultant to know about Workday updates. When and how does Workday gets updated? It's a software at the end of the day. There are Workday updates. Like we have, like any other software, you need updates in it. Your cell phones, Android, iPhones, iOS, macOS, all gets updates every now and then. So what are those updates? How do we work around it as a team? Also, what are the different environments that Workday provide us? And what are the purpose of each and every environment? That is also very important to understand. So in one of the se session, I cannot say on which date or on which day of the next week, but next week we'll definitely go through that particular topic. And that's very, very important. And once we have tenant access, we'll start with the supervisory organization, basically the organization topic. And uh, we'll build on. So that first few sessions are literally very very important if you set up the base right your following sessions will be easier to understand you'll be able to relate back to what you do everything you do you have to relate it back to your previous session and how that gets connected 